Just gonna eat my sandwich. Cold grilled cheese. Mm hmm. This is so good. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Drunk Theater Podcast. I'm your host, Sophia. Yes, I am snacking. I am starving. Um, so. Let's get this show on there, bro. This is going to be a really, really, really interesting podcast. I don't have any notes with me. I already have an idea of what I want to do and talk about. So let's get started. Um, first things first, I've had a rough morning. Very rough. Um, I go to, I went to the doctors this morning with the two doctor's appointments. And the first one was a checkup. Um, I do see a doctor to, to help manage my depression. I take medication for that. And I found, like, that whenever I, I found that this place, they're pretty mean there. And I've been kicked out of a mental health uh, doctor once before because I was 10 minutes late. Um, like, they literally just kicked me out. Like, they just said, go, we don't want to see you no more. Which is devastating, you know. If I was a person going through really bad depression, anxiety, or just anything like that, that's a really dangerous situation to put somebody who's already feeling so bad about themselves. Luckily, I was stable and I was okay, but you can only imagine, you know, to just get kicked out. So anyway, today I didn't get kicked out. Um, They tried to detain me (laughs) because they yelled at me for being late, and I said I don't like being treated like that. And the lady said, you better get used to it because I'm going to be here forever. And that made me feel really unsafe. She had her hand on the door and wouldn't let me leave. Like, it was bad. It was a really bad morning. She would not let me leave. Um, So I started hyperventilating because I thought my health, my safety was in order. And I fainted. And um, they finally let me leave after that. And so I'm safe and sound now. Um, So I'm good. Just a little shook. But I'm okay. You know, sometimes people are just, you know, not good people. And... That's why I always strive to make people's day like so happy and worthwhile because there's a lot of people in this world where they're just not, I'm sorry, where they're just not like good people. And I don't encounter bad people a lot. Like it's not something you encounter. So I feel like the majority of people in this world are amazing, wonderful people. I talk to y'all all the time. That's what I love about my podcast is I get to talk to you guys and be there with you guys. But I found when it comes to mental health in my town, in my city of, of uh, in Kokomo, Indiana, in Tipton, Indiana, and Sheridan, Indiana, is that I find that they tend to get away with treating their patients really, really bad and crappy, as opposed to other doctor's offices that I've been to. Um, they have a tendency to treat their patients more crappier, so um, just because they feel like they can get away with it. And with me, they can't. So... Don't worry about me. I'm just really stressed out and tired. I also got blood work done today. Um, I'll share more about that in the future. Um, but yeah, I'm okay. I'm safe. I'm fine. Just a little bit like annoyed and upset. But that's okay because I'm here and I absolutely love doing this podcast. You know, I was like, man, they get me down, but they can't make me stop doing my podcast. Ain't that right, puppy? I gave Puppy a piece of my grilled cheese. I don't know if I'm going to put that in there. And now she's like all up in. Jake made me grilled cheese last night because I wasn't feeling well. And I'm like, yes. Mm. Grilled cheese. You already had a piece, sweet. And she had doggy chow. She fine. You fine, you fatty. So I was on vacation. Hold on, let me stop. (laughs) So I was on vacation. So like I just got all my pets back from my mother-in-law's. And they are so thankful to be back. And they all came back fat. So now I know that my mother-in-law spoils the heck out of them. Even more so than I thought she did. Because everyone came back looking hefty. Puppies looking hefty. My man cat looking hefty. My girl cat, she always be hefty. I, I don't know why. And now puppy looking hefty. Like you looking thick, girl. Is that inappropriate? I'm sorry. <laughs> and Bunny still bald um (laughs) but you know what's funny i forgot to mention in my she's licking what the smell off of my pants or my sandwich girl i ain't got nothing you ate all the doggy chow bunny however she's still bald but i forgot to mention that even though she's still like like when she's growing back her hair she eats a ton in fact we thought that she was pregnant the first the second time when she molted with us, we thought she was pregnant because it's like she just 
she lost all her hair she started to eat and she started to hoard all of her toys like she was making a nest like it was it was bizarre like i thought she was pregnant no nope, she just gets i wonder if their hormone levels raise when they lose their hair kind of like you know people our hormone levels go up and down with the season uh, men and women so I wonder if like the same is for bunnies because she's acting like straight up hormonal she's eating a lot she's pooping a lot but it's healthy looking I know that's creepy I have to look you know <laughs> to make sure she's all right out of breath and um so yeah like bunny is eating a lot everyone's fat and hungry I don't understand I don't get it puppy whatever so yeah Anyway, how's everyone doing? How was your weekend? Um, I was kind of like MIA this week. I was posting, but I feel like I wasn't quite there connecting with all of y'all because I was in completely different time zone. Like, I hate when I travel. Like, I love when I travel, but I hate when I travel to a different time zone. It was only like two hours, like, or three hours, what have you. I went from Eastern time to Mountain time. But you want to hear the real struggle? But the first day we were up for a full, like, 24 hours just because of the way we traveled. Uh, second but is that daylight saving time kicked in on the day we came back. So it felt like once again, we were up for a full 24 hours. So I was beat on that trip. And we we didn't just stay inside. Like I went to go visit my grandpa and his sisters. Um, we, we went hiking because my grandparents, my, my grandpa lives in Arizona and he's in uh, Sun City. And if anyone's familiar with that area, Peoria and Glendale, um, there's a ton of hiking. And it's really good hiking. Like, it's so nice. Um, it's so different from what we have around here. And Jake and I, we are hike fanatics. You know, we always take the, the puppy hiking because she's a hot mess and needs to be exercised. I need to be exercised too. You know, I work inside. I sit in my chair all day. And sometimes I'm like, Jake, take me on a walk. Like, I'm like the dog. Like, I need a walk. So, like, we always go hiking. And honestly, it was such a beautiful place to hike. I'm going to put pictures. Hey. And, yes, I went hiking in a dress. I love hiking in dresses. It's great. Um, <laughs> what I like about it is that it's just, like, really easy to move. It's breezy. It's nice. It's simple. People might think that I'm crazy, but I, I have hiking dresses. That dress isn't a hiking dress. I was just trying to be cute, but I do have hiking dresses. So, yeah, I usually hike in dresses and sandals. Out there, I wore cowboy boots because they got the scorpions and the snakes, okay? Okay, like, I'm a city girl. I ain't getting no scorpion bite in my feet. So, I, I wore boots. I wore work boots just because of that. But other than that, I have a dress on and it was a good time. And thank you everyone for sending love to my grandpa. Um, and I posted that post about him and why he means so much to Jake and I. He honestly is the most important male figure in my life growing up. Um, and... I'm not going to touch too much on that, but I don't want to take up too much time. We're already at 9 minutes and 10 seconds here, you know what I mean? But he was just really important to me growing up. He always made me feel special and loved. And um, I honestly would not be the woman that I am today without him. So that's why Jake and I, we really be sure to visit him quite often. It's a lot, you know. It's quite a drive. Sorry, I'm like spitting and tired. I'm sorry, but... Um, so, yeah, like, Jake and I, we always make an effort to go. It's pretty hard to go. Uh, whenever he asks, I'm like, oh, no, you're right next door, you know, like, try to make him feel better about it, but it is kind of hard to get there a lot. Um, Jake has to take off of work, and then it's just, like, it's quite a bit. It's a little financial, a lot of financial stress there when we go, but honestly, it's a priceless trip. It's worth every penny, and... Yeah, so I'm really happy to go out there and visit him. And it's such a beautiful area. And y'all Arizona people that live out there that, that watch me, y'all lucky. I know it gets hotter than hot, hot, hot out there sometimes, but most of the year is stunning. So anyway, um, I was going to talk to you today about some plain knitting. And um, yeah, so let's get started. Oh, and I also was going to do a bag review. So let's get started. Let's get started. Okay, so first I'm going to start off with the bag review and that's going to tie into plain knitting. Okay, you ready? I got a plan now. Hot mess of a show. My arm is all banged up. I got a C-band on because I'm sick. 
but you know what? It matches my shirt, and yeah, so, <laughs> ooh, hotmess.com. So, um, I I was contacted by Bags by Awesome Grain. Um, it's a shop on Etsy, and they sell project bags. Okay, and so she was generous enough to give y'all a coupon code that won't expire. I'll put that right here. And um, it's 15% off and it won't expire. And she said, and I quote, I hope I'm quoting this right, but she said, for anyone that's late to the party, <laughs> you can still get your discount in there. Um, and so usually when people try to send me stuff, like I'm very like anal about it because I always give really, really honest reviews and I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings and whatever, blah, 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 blah. but I really like this. Okay. Like no tea, no shade. I really like this bag. Um, and here's why it has all the things that I look for in a knitting bag. Number one, it has a flat bottom. I already talked to y'all before about the flat bottoms. What I like about the flat bottoms is that you put your stuff in there, right? And then you grab your knitting, so I'm to take a miter square and just toss it in there and it'll stand up. And you could put like your, the skein that you're knitting from, whatever you knit from, um, in there. And you can just knit straight from out the bag, kind of using it like a, like a yarn bowl. And I love bags like that over like drawstring bags. I have to have a square bottom. It's just me or just like flat bottom, whatever y'all call it, y'all talented sewers. Another thing I like about this that really cross off my list of things I need in a project bag is that it is fully lined. Um, I don't know much about sewing. <laughs> I have a degree in it. <sighs> Whew, that's a nightmare. I don't know much about sewing. I have a fashion degree. I took like so many sewing classes and I cannot tell you much about it. However, I do think this is lined and I think there's like something in between the layers of fabric because it's quite stiff. It's not overtly stiff, but it's the right quite right type of stiffness that allows it to be durable and allows it to stand up and um so that's what i like about it it's fully lined look see the lining is really high quality and the fact that it's sturdy like that and it's not just regular quilting fabric it's either more durable quilting fabric like the other bags that i reviewed or there's something in the middle you know, in between the layers of fabric to give it stiffness. I don't know. I can't tell you which one is which. What I do know is that whatever she did to it, it's sturdy AF. And that's something that I really, really need because I travel quite a bit. I might not fly a lot. Oh, my glasses are dirty. I am so sorry. Um, I might not fly a ton anymore. Thank God. I used to fly a lot when I was in master, when I was going to my master's program to visit family and stuff. Um, I don't fly a ton anymore, so I don't necessarily need it sturdy for flying, but I do knit on the go. Knitting is my job. My hair is a hot mess. Look at my hair. <laughs> this was a hot mess of a day. Like, my hair looks like crud. It was cute earlier. It was cute. It's just sometimes it dries like a hot mess. It's okay. What was I talking about? Oh my gosh, I don't have my heated coffee mug warmer thing oh my gosh you know what i've got to tell you i bought a new coffee cup do y'all know bohemian raspberry like that song it goes mama oh, you know you know i bought a cup that has a llama on it and it's a llama dressed up like freddie mercury and you know what it says on it it says llama oh, instead of mama I left that thing in my cart forever. Like, I was like, Sophia, you can't buy this. This is dumb. I bought it. <laughs> Ooh, puppy came. Puppy thought my singing meant I was in distress. She thinks she's a rescue dog. You got eye boogers all over you. You got eye boogers, girl. Get away from your girls. <laughs> Hey, this show is having a hot mess moment. Do you want to contribute to the hot mess of this show? I have a Patreon. And for some reason, a lot of you are on it. So great job, guys. I do my stuff every monthly for Patreon. Month <gasps> I do my stuff monthly for Patreon. So be a patron. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh, puppy needs a Kleenex, she looks so gross. So this bag has two things that I like. And another thing that I, what was I talking about? This bag. What I like about this bag also is the way that she cut the fabric. I am very anal about the way people cut fabric. Um, this is a big surface, but sometimes I find that with bags, even with their big surfaces, the fabric can be cut all willy nilly just to get more cuts out of it. You know what I'm trying to say? You know what I'm saying? So I really like that she kind of paid attention to that. And even on the strap, you know, like they're all oriented right. And you could see a lot of the flamingos. And yes, I picked a flamingo bag. Why? Because I wanted to. I thought, you know what? It was cold when I when I picked out the bag that I wanted, and I just wanted something really kitsy, Vegasy. Avia, get out the litter box. Avia, what are you doing? I wanted something really kitsy, fun, and like Vegasy. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> Flamingos make me think of Vegas, but they do. And I just thought it was really fun and kitsy. Now, what's also great about this bag is that this is the perfect project bag to bring on vacation. Totes perfect. Um, the reason being is just the shape. It's very, you can like smush it up pretty well and you can hold quite a bit. Cause I don't know about y'all, but whenever I go on vacation, I tend to collect more yarn with me and then I have to pack said yarn. So whenever I go on vacation, I like to bring, bring quite a big project bag. I bought my pom-pom bag with me this time. Um, so I like to do that so that way when I buy more yarn on vacation, I have a safe place to store it. Because if you do not store your yarn in a safe place, I have learned today that then you will get an entire granola bar stuck to your lace weight shawl because you are a adult child. Mm. Vanilla coffee, vanilla creamer, so basic, so good. You know, when you go on vacation and like, you know, coffee is good everywhere, but there's something about the coffee you make at home that's like, you know what I mean? Like you get a coffee that you make at home and it might not be the best. Like this is all these brand coffee. Um, it's just something comforting. I don't know. Y'all know what I'm saying? Me and coffee at home. It's like, so yeah. So. This does get my, this project bag does get my stamp of approval. I absolutely love it. Hey y'all, this is Sophia from the future. I forgot to mention that there is a giveaway hosted by Bags by Awesome Granny. All you have to do to win any bag of your choosing from her Etsy shop all you gotta do is just comment below this video and you will be entered. That's it. So comment below to be entered and bye. But I still have to share with you some tips. This will be really fast that there isn't a lot with knitting on a plane. Okay, knitting on a plane. Get <laughs> that sounds like a movie. Knitting on a plane featuring Samuel L. Jackson and Anne Hathaway. <laughs> Anyway, knitting on a plane. So in the 10 plus years that I've been knitting, I take my shoes off, I'm getting hot. I'm wearing my fake Uggs, my ugly, my fugly fake Uggs. Y'all come for me with these Uggs on like, ah, fake wool, I hate you. Anyway, um, knitting on a plane. I never, in the 10 or plus years I've been knitting, I've never got stopped by a TSA agent with my knitting needles. Because, I don't know, I just never got stopped. I was very anal about how I packed it. Well, this time around, y'all, I got cocky, okay? I packed all my projects in a beautiful knitting bag, elaborate knitting bag, and I put it all in my purse. And I saw the TSA ladies run my bag through the little conveyor belt like three times or shaking their head like, we don't know what's in this bag, you know? And I'm like, oh, fish sticks. Like, oh, pickle juice. Like, I'm gonna have to wait. 
And mind you, this line was already long. Like, it was like 3 a.m. when we went there. So everyone's beat. Like, all the TSA agents are beat. So it took them forever to get through everybody. It was like five people in line. And, like, it didn't matter. They were tired. So everything was going through slow. Like, they're people. Like, hello, it's 3 a.m. Everyone was, like, antsy about it. I'm like, y'all, if I had to get a shift at 3 a.m., I don't care. I'm going to be beat and slow, too. We're people. We're not robots. So it took them forever to get to me. And then when they got to my bag, they kept looking at it like, we don't know what this is. The guy, <laughs> so the guy was like, ma'am, you got anything sharp in those bags? And I'm like, just my knitting, you know? <laughs> and then he just looked at me like, you know, he barely, like, he opened up the bag. He felt all my pom-poms, okay? My pom-poms got felt up. Like, the pom not my body pom like, the actual pom-poms got felt up. And <laughs> he looked down. He looked annoyed that they stopped me. He tried to close it, and I'm like, it's okay, I got it. And then he's like, have a safe trip, and was out. And my husband was like, my husband looking at me like, it was your knitting, right? And I'm like, shut up. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was fun. So I got stops. Now I can tell you, instead of what to do, what not to do when you're on a plane. So first things first, when you're knitting on a plane, um, less is more. I had a stuffed bag. Less is more. So, um, I had a sweater project in there, several sets of needles, my notions, I had everything in there, I had a shawl pattern, like that, that, that project bag was busted at the seams, and y'all saw that bag, like I'm gonna put it right here again, like that's, that's not like a little bag, it was quite, a, it could fit a sweater and then some, Ooh, I'm out of breath. I need my emergency chocolate. So if you're like me and you need to bring a lot of stuff with you, like alternate product projects, you're gonna be there for a minute. What I would do is pick the project that you definitely wanna knit on the flight. So for me, it would be like the smallest project would be like a shawl, right? Then pack your other projects in your carry-on bag or your checked luggage. I usually don't check luggage because I'm anal. I don't like to do that. And nowadays, it's not even free no more. Like, usually when you check a luggage now, it's like 50 bucks, even if that's your first luggage. It's ridiculous. So I don't usually check luggage for that reason. So on the way back, I put my big bulky project um, and I put my knitting bag in my carry-on. And then I put my other knitting, which was a really small lace weight shawl project. It wasn't that big yet. And I put it in its separate compartment in my purse. Somehow, throughout the way, a granola bar got stuck to it, but that's my fault, being an adult child. You know, if you got a separate compartment in your purse, put it in there. Next time, what I would do was put it in a pencil case, something small like that and recognizable for TSA, because I'm sure they get a lot of makeup bags and things like that going through. But a knitting project bag that was this big and, and bulky inside of another purse it just threw them through a loop. You don't want your needles to be confiscated. However, every country is different. And I've heard of some people getting their needles confiscated in other countries, specifically when they're when they're traveling abroad. So when they're going from one country to another, um, not necessarily out of the USA or, or going to the USA. So with this, what I recommend is that you, I would use interchangeable needles. Now what that does is that, here, I got them right here because I'm fanatical about them. What that does is that they look like this, like regular circular needles. I recommend getting a few sets of these. So that way, if you do get, if they don't like how sharp your needles are, if you had a TSA agent that day that's like, look, I don't feel comfortable letting you through on a flight with this. It's a little sharp, you know what I mean? Um, you, you just unscrew it. Just literally just unscrew it. Just be like, cool, unscrew it. When you get there, buy a replacement. Um, that's pretty much what I, that, that's my model with it. Like, I always make sure to use interchangeables 
wooden and acrylic are less scary that day I only had metal needles with me because I was doing lace knitting so I don't like knitting lace with wood and acrylic needles it just drives me bonkers any other knitting I usually use wood um, it's just warm you know I like that warmth and how it's not cold on my fingers so I'm that could possibly be why they stopped me was because of the metal and um, it's just a little more intimidating than that. I also had some sharp like Addy laces like I came prepped like you know like I bought everything with me this time because now I'm a full-on knitwear designer now like she fancy now so I can't just bring my two shoelaces and <laughs> and a darning needle like so FYI like interchangeables are the way to go you can just unscrew them be like all right cool you probably won't be able to knit on the plane you know play some bejeweled when you get to your destination get um get replacements that's what i love about using um knit pro um i don't know what you call it in the u.s i'm in the u.s but i call them knit pro um just because i order their their uk brand because they have extended sizes knitters pride that's what I love about Knitter's Pride is that they are sold everywhere um, across the country. I was able to find Knitter's Pride and Tangible Needles. So if I'm ever in a hunch and I can't get my needles and I want to knit, just I just go to Joann's, Michael's, what have you, and I just pick them up and they're there. Like, it's amazing. I recommend Joann's, though. Joann's usually has it. But, you know, like, call ahead um, and then you can get it. A replacement boy also has it everywhere I personally do not like boy needles um, I find them hard to work with um, I think is it clover needles they have them everywhere as well with bamboo needles that's also a great alternative if you're traveling you want to get a needle that you can get elsewhere just in case it breaks or it gets confiscated you know you just want to make sure you got that um, and if you're staying for a week hello Amazon Prime you know so those are some really, really great ways uh, just in case it does get confiscated. I thought mine were going to be confiscated and it didn't even bug me not one bit because I knew I can just go to the craft store as soon as I get there and pick up a couple of needles for five bucks and like nothing happened. So I just try to say, you know, whatever happens, happens with that. Another hack that I do is that I bring toenail clippers instead of uh, scissors. So... I usually never use a travel with scissors, but because I bought a bulky yarn this time, I can't just break it with my hands. So I bought toenail clippers and they were like this little itty bitty, like they're not big. Don't get anything scary looking. Don't get nothing like a Swiss army knife with like attachments, you know, <laughs> like I got a really basic $1 toenail clipper um, that I've had for too long that I travel with because it's like this small, like legit, it's like compact. And half the time, they don't even know what it is when I travel with it. So it just like goes right through like that. I know you could bring toenail clippers, but scissors are tend to be a little iffy. I think you could bring scissors up to a certain size on a plane. But honestly, those TSA agents just use their discretion. You know, that's just their job. So um, you just want to be careful with what you choose to bring. You don't want them to have to, you know, take it away. <laughs> so yeah, toenail clippers worked really well for me. They work better than scissors. Um, definitely get a project bag that you can fit. My project bag was perfect. The dude was just feeling up my pom poms. <laughs> and you can tell by his face, he felt stupid doing it, but he had to do it. Like he did not look happy having to feel my knitting bag, okay? Like it was just like, well, they gave it to me to feel up and now I gotta feel it up. But <laughs> poor guy, you know? So it's just like, <laughs> get a bag that that can fit your things, but don't try to make it all big and bulky and suspect looking like I did. Maybe even separate them amongst your bag. So I, on the way back, I put some in my carry-on and the one I want to knit in flight in my purse. Um, Definitely next time I do it, I will have a smaller, like a little makeup bag. I keep makeup bags around just for like sock knitting and small knits like that. So that way I, it can be protected in my bag, but still not be so conspicuous. 
think that's it. Yeah, I think I covered everything. I hope that helped everybody. I'm sorry I was a little bummed out at first. I just had a really bad experience with my doctor. And, you know, I just want to talk about it because it's like, this is something that happens quite a bit. I read a lot about it, you know, how places take advantage of people because they think they are meant, they, they are incompetent or they can't stand up for themselves. A lot of these people, you know, a lot of places take advantage of their patients because they because they know they can't stand up for themselves. Well, I can stand up for myself, so I did. And I am going through a formal complaint and I'm taking care of it. I just, you know, having a platform so I put it out there is that if this happened to you, please tell somebody. You know, they cannot let, they, they cannot treat people like this. It doesn't matter if you have depression, schizophrenia, uh, anxiety disorders, um, what have you. No one deserves that level, that poor, poor care, nobody. Um, so please take care of yourselves, y'all. Um, I'm fine. I'm okay. I'm safe. I did not feel safe there, but I'm home. I'm safe now. It's being taken care of. Um, I'm, I still don't feel well, just other things going on, but that's okay because we are all in this together. And I just want to quickly thank everyone for joining the mystery knit along. I am so excited. Like that gives me so much joy in general. Like I want to cry. Like so many of y'all are emailing me and talking to me and thank you so much. I so appreciate that. Like I could honestly cry right now. Um, I'd like to thank everyone that also purchased my, uh, my dippers cowlet. I love that thing. I don't have it on me. I miss it so much. It's in Steven and Penelope. They've asked for it, so they've got it. And I'm so excited that my Netherlands friends are like seeing it and in person and trying it on. And I like to thank everyone for um, supporting me with that. I really couldn't do it without you guys. And I am grateful every single day um, that I'm on here. And I'm not just saying that. I really am really grateful every single day for this, you know. Um, so thank you guys, and I'm about to cry, like literally emotional wreck, not because of this morning, just an emotional wreck, okay, um, so yeah, anyway, I will catch you on Friday, I love y'all so much, bye!